안녕하세요. 예, 토너번의 분만 우정형 판사라고 합니다. 예, 귀중한 시간 내주셔서 토너번이 주최하는 컨퍼런스 및 모의재판에 예, 참가해 주셔서 감사드리고 또 2시 반에 시작인데 미리 이렇게 일찍 오셔서 관심을 보여주셔서 감사드리고요. 어, 기다리시면서 뭐 판단도 나누시고 주셔도 좋으시고요. 아마 좀 지루하실 것 같아서 미리 그 자료집을 보시는 것도 괜찮지만 제가 2시 반부터 영어로 한 3, 4분 정도 이 사건의 기후를 설명하게 돼 있는데 아무래도 영어보다는 그 전에 막간을 이용해서 저도 예의를 하고요. 국문으로 한국말로 조금 설명을 한번 드리고 보시는 게 아마 이따 조금 시간 제한이 있고 하니까 미리 주제를 가지고 많은 예, 논의를 하고 했습니다. 그럼 자료집을 참고하시면 좋은 자료가 많이 있을 것이고 상상을 할 것입니다. 그리고 시간 관계상 저희는 그러면 뭐 손해배상액 신뢰도 따로 하지 않기 때문에 손해배상액은 10만 달러로 미리 정해놓기도 하고요. 기재를 해주셨습니다. 그리고 이 사건과 관련된 몇몇 그리고 이 사건과 관련해서는 예, 그 출원 경과를 간단하게 말씀을 드리면 원래는 그냥 어, 어, 노즐 유닛이라고 예, 다만 다른 것은 그 노즐의 형상이 원형이 아니라 일자형이라는 것이 차이거든요. 이에 따라서 예, 그 출원이는 예, 플레임을 노즐 유닛에서 어, 그 우월한 효과라고 하는 그 원형 모양의 노즐을 여러 개 배치함으로써 예, 여러 가지 우월한 효과가 있다고 했습니다. 예, 직접 계속 설명을 드리고요. 두 번째 쟁점은 예, 공기 양의 조절 수단이라는 기능식 청구학에 대한 해석이 되겠습니다. 그 있는 경우에는 그 청구법의 해석을 가명의 상대한 설명이나 도배를 참작해서 예, 그 청구법의 해석을 통해서 청구법에 확정하도록 
Um, I'm truly grateful for our boarding guests for building up the survey this morning. And we also play an important part for the port's efforts in international cooperation activities, including the annual organization of this conference. And this year is very special because it is the first time that we are holding the core sessions. I hope it will be an opportunity to think about how the subjects of the main sessions claim construction and trademark similarity in particular are handled in practice. A brief housekeeping announcement. We have one hour for the patent session and one hour for the trademark session. Each session has 30 minutes for all arguments, 15 minutes for deliberation, and then 15 minutes for judgment rendering and comments from the panel. After the panel goes to the deliberation room, uh, this is very important, please remain in your seats. The pattern for Korea does not usually provide jury trials, but today we do. The audience will serve as the, the jury for the panel. Thank you for reservation of that. Now I'm going to introduce the participants and participants for the room for session. For the pattern report, in the order you are seeing, we have Judge Hong Liu, a Guangzhou IP Court of China, Chief Judge Leonard Stark of the U.S. District Court for the District of Delaware, <coughs> Presiding Judge Sing Yar of the Patent Court of Korea, Presiding Judge Kushi Kuchiroka of IP High Court of Japan, and Mr. James St. Bill, Barrister from the United Kingdom. <coughs> presiding Judge Saul will serve as the presiding judge for the panel. The plaintiff is represented by Mr. Chun Yu Lee, attorney, and Mr. Han Yong Lee, U.S. licensed attorney from Canada. The defendant is represented by Mr. Ha Yong Zhang, attorney, and Ms. Song Yan Julie Shin, U.S. licensed attorney from Lien Ko. We also have members of organizing committee for the patent court session. High Court Judge Song Yao Bo, Judge Jin Yi Lee, and Technical Examiner Yong Jae Kim of the Patent Court of Korea. We will soon begin the Patent Court Court once the arbitration panel enters the room.
time limit, one hour. Yeah. So for the sake of efficiency, through free trial hearing, mm -hmm. both parties will raise the issues. Now the designated judge, Sung Yoku, will give us a short brief on the result. You focus his statement and you can understand easily the background and overview of this case. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Before the hearing begins, I will briefly introduce factual background and issues of this case for your convenience. Although this, it is the fifth conference, this is the first moot court mock trial, I'm, and I'm honored to be part of this trial. As we reviewed and discussed claim construction in yesterday's first session, now is the time to apply what we have learned to this hypothetical case. Both the plaintiff's patent and the defendant's accused products are all related to bladeless fan. Due to time limits, we will focus on the infringement issue. Other issues will not be considered uh, in this session. If the defendant product is found infringing the patent, the amount of damages would be $100,000. <coughs> Korean Patent Act will be the governing law, and Korean Supreme Court issues will be the secondary non binding source. Now, let's move to plaintiff's patent. Let's check the claim and a drawing of one embodiment. I think both parties will explain about this in more detail in their oral proceedings. In this regard, let me have your attention to element D and element E. As to the uh, circular nozzle unit, you may note that the claim language does not specifically limit the number of the nozzle. However, in the detailed uh, description provides only one embodiment with plural number of nozzles. It says preferable number is three. As to means for controlling the amount of air, it is so-called a means plus function claim language. The detailed description of the invention provides that as one environment, the speed of the motor is constant, and in such case, the amount of air can be adjusted by using the controller located in the tubular portion. Let's see the defendant's products. Please note two things. The first, the fan assembly has just one nozzle. Second, the amount of air flowing from the base into the nozzle can be controlled by adjusting the rotation speed of the motor using the control switch on the outer case. Now let's see the prosecution history. The original claim language of element B was a, a novel unit without any limitation. During prosecution, the examiner cited a prior art like this figure, bladeless fan with a non circular nozzle. Responding to this prior art, the patent amended the claim language from a nozzle unit to a circular nozzle unit. In this regard, please note that the patent amended only the shape of the nozzle and did not specify the number of the nozzle in the claim language. At the same time, plaintiff made a response explaining the superior effect of a circular shaped nozzle which allows a plurality of nozzles compared to a single non-circular shaped nozzle. The issues can be summarized as the following. The first issue is claim construction of a word, a circular nozzle unit. As we have seen earlier, an issue may arise as to whether we need to consider the theory of prosecution history as well and the detailed description and the drawing of the invention to properly con construct the claim. And the claim should be narrowly interpreted and the number of the nozzle should be limited to plural or not. The second issue is construction of so-called means plus function claim. There can be two possible arguments. The first is that, as a general principle, this kind of claim should be interpreted as incorporating all inventions having the same function, effect, and or property. The second is that the scope of this kind of claim should be construed in consideration of the description of the invention 
and should be limited to the embodiments or its equivalents. I hope this introduction might be helpful and enjoy the hearing. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Now we are doing for allowing the proposal size. Both sides have only 10 minutes. You should keep your 10 minutes. So now, thank you, Council. Thank you, Your Honor. Now I begin. Now I begin to thank you so much. After years of development research, the project is successfully paved the new market by inventing the brightest plan. So the plan to obtain the patent on the brightest plan for its innovative design and technology. The defendant competes with the plaintiff, competes directly with the plaintiff's <coughs> brightness band. We have demonstrated that the plaintiff's pattern is increased by the defendant. Then, after hearing the defendant's argument, we rebut them on each issue. First, let's, let's take a look at the subject pattern. The social pattern has is about is about an invention of of red red, red span, comprising a hollow base member with an open button, a motor located in the inside of the base member, and an impeller connected to said said motor, a circular motor unit and means for controlling the amount of amount of amount of airflow from said base member to said motor unit. Uh, now, uh, next we uh, examine the configuration of the dependent uh, product. The dependent product has uh, also has the all of these elements of the pattern frame. Uh, there's no question and no dispute between the parties. The dependent product has element A to C on the pattern frame. And as for element D and E, it's also clear that the dependent product includes a circular module unit and the means for controlling the amount of the airflowing from base member to a module unit. So this is a natural infringement case. To be more concrete, uh, to be more concrete here on right, uh, this is a, a drawing of dependent product, and this is the module unit. The dependent product on the library has a circular module unit. The dependent argues that each product controls the amount of L flow per unit time, but you know. The setting the control, the setting the amount of airflow per unit time naturally leads to controlling the amount of airflow. So, in this case, in the, in, in the dependent product, the, even though the, the dependent product controls the amount of airflow per unit time uh, by adjusting the motor speed with this uh, control switch, the control switch in the product, dependent product, in fact, the functions as a means for controlling the amount of amount of airflow from the base member to the nodal unit. So, in conclusion, the dependent product infringes the factor pattern literal. Then, now uh, after doing different argument, then we will work the dependent argument. Thank you. Dependent yeah. thousand, you may argue for plaintiff's claim. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, on the first issue, the number of nozzles, the law is clear. A claim should be construed based not only on what's recited in the claim itself, but also based on what's disclosed in the specification and what's argued in the prosecution history. And based on such arguments and disclosures, a feature can be excluded from the claim scope even if there's no amendment made during the prosecution history. Here, the patent claim says a circular nozzle unit, 
without specifying how many nozzles are included in this nozzle unit. In explaining this claim, the specification says the nozzles are concentrically placed in plurality and an outlet is placed at, at the center of each nozzle to discharge air. The pure number of nozzles enables the wind to discharge from the fan in constant pressure throughout the entire inner area of the fan. It's the red area here. Here, to have constant pressure throughout the entire inner area, it will be necessary to have multiple nozzles because you're not going to achieve the same effect with a single nozzle. So this disclosure alone supports the plane construction that the nozzle unit should include multiple nozzles. But there's more. During the prosecution history, the patentee distinguished this invention from the prior art based on the number of nozzles. The prior art nozzle, as you see here, has a single nozzle. And this is what the patentee argued. The, the patent invention can have a pure number of concentric placed nozzles of different diameters, and this allows it to have a unique working effect because the pressure of the immediate airflow can be constant throughout the surface area that's covered by the fan. By contrast, for the prior art, it is impossible to have plurality of nozzles. And in fact, the prior art is unable to provide air uniformly throughout a wide circular area as the claim mentioned does. The penalty here clearly disclaimed the prior art structure having a single nozzle. Now let's turn to Fan B, the accused product. The accused product, Fan B, is built just like the prior art, except that it has a circular shape as opposed to the elongated shape of the prior art. But it works the same and has the same technical idea. Fan B has a single nozzle, just like the prior art. And this nozzle expels some air, not a whole lot, but some air. And this wind of air creates a pressure difference between the front of the fan and the back of the fan. With this pressure difference, you will see two things happening. One, it induces the air behind the fan to follow and pass through the fan. And two, it will cause the fan, the, uh, the air around the fan to also travel and move together with the wind. The result is that the wind flow generated by the fan is much greater than what's emitted by the nozzle itself up to 15 times greater. It works like this. The idea here is not about blowing lots of air throughout the entire surface area of the fan, as in the patent invention, but to utilize pressure difference to create airflow, to utilize the air around the fan to create a volume of wind. And to do this, you need a fan to be hollow, uh, it is essential that you have as much space in the fan and, uh, and it will be impossible, as the patent argued this during the present history, to have multiple nozzles in this type of fan. So, Your Honor, Fan B is about a fundamentally different idea, uh, an idea that has been disclaimed and distinguished by the patent team itself, and therefore the patent claim should not be extended to Fan B and not to the means and risk plus function. Thank you, Your Honor. Let's move on to the means of airflow control. As my colleague explained fully, the fundamental technical idea is totally different between the power invention and the product. The power invention is about generating air and deliver the air to the user, not other air. But in the product, the, we are, the air stuck into this device is used for making pressure difference. In the nozzle. That is not useful delivering to the user. The air delivered to the user is the air behind the nozzle multiplied by the nozzle pressure difference. So there's a fundamental difference in technical aspect. So this fundamental difference affects the number of nozzles as well as the control of the alcohol. And so Basically, the power invention, the amount of air is controlled for control the amount of air delivered to the user. So, I say, the controlling of the amount of air here is same thing with controlling the amount of air delivered to the user. Because the airflow is the same. 
but in the accused product, the control of the air is for making pressure difference. And the air delivered to the user is a indirect consequence of the control of pressure. So the control is different in two inventions. And this is a technical fundamental difference. And this is not a random argument. This is supported by the legal theory and laws in Korea and the US. Under the Korean law, the Supreme Court ruled that the claim should be controlled in objective and reasonable manner. As you see, this case, this term is used in other cases describing the manual that we provide. So this objective and reasonable interpretation means that the construction should be made in view of the specification and in view of the technical idea of invention. And the U.S. law is more clear regarding this claim term. There's a specific statute for means, for means plus function language. And the means plus function language should be construed to cover the corresponding structure described as specification and the equivalence. But here, the plaintiff does not argue that the accused product is equivalent to the patent invention. So there's nothing about the equivalence. And then the claim invention should be construed to cover only the structure described in the specification. Let's see the structure described in the specification. The specification describes the control of the handle. And this handle is for opening or closing the area where the air flows. So the air flows through the area and then deliver to the user. And this part is about controlling that area, that amount, that air delivered to the user. And the structure for this purpose is that handle with handle attached to the controller. And this controls the area of the airflow. But in the accused product, we don't control the amount of air. We control the speed of the air, the pressure of the air. So there is fundamental difference. And in view of this technical difference, and in view of the specification, in view of the drawing and description, the claim language under the Korean law should be limited to the structure that changes the amount of air by changing the area. And as I explained below previously, under the US law, it is very clear. Because the specification only describes this structure. And this structure is not included in the accused product. So there will be no infringement. In conclusion, I want to say one thing. The patentee should not be granted with a right that covers that what is not invented by the inventor, what is not contributed by the inventor. The inventor invented the structure that is not at the time. But the accused product is based on a totally different idea, what is not invented by the inventor. So the attempt to expand the scope of the patent to cover this accused product that is not invented by the inventor should be failing. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Behind you, behind you, counselors, there are many jurors. Everyone understand the issue? Some jurors have a sleep. You don't explain it easily to understand. And great counselor, do you want to rebut? Yes, we do. Yes, go ahead. So thank you, Your Honor. We will rebut defendant's two arguments about the scope of a circular nozzle unit limitation. And also rebut defendant's argument about how to construct the means for controlling the amount of air limitation. By showing why those arguments should fail, and also establishing that those claims should not be so narrowly interpreted. Basically, the first issue about a circular nozzle unit limitation, 
defendants are making uh, this argument invoking two legal theories. The first theory is that the specification disclosed only uh, multiple nodal embodiment. But that uh, argument should is pretty weak and should fail. Uh, defendants' counsel went lengthy about the alleged difference between the two technologies, but we understand, we agree that the, the nuanced difference in technology is out of the scope of the argument today. More importantly, what defendant has been doing here is basically trying to read what's disclosed in the specification, meaning the three nozzle embodiment, into the scope of the claim, which is not allowed under the Korean patent law. Because as you can see from here, the Korean Supreme Court ruled, quote, the specification may not limit what's stated in the claim as long as the technical scope of the claim is clear. And the language at issue is very clear. A circular nozzle unit. And that, as you understand in the patent work, the article A in front of circular nozzle unit include both singular and plural, meaning covers both one nozzle embodiment and multiple nozzle embodiment. Therefore, uh, the acircular nozzle uh, unit limitation should cover both multiple nozzle but also one nozzle embodiment as in the defendant's uh, choose product. Defendant's uh, second attempt to narrowly construe the term acircular uh, nozzle unit limitation is based on prosecution history estimal theory. But that theory an argument should also fail because based on the Korean Supreme Court's ruling, uh, such a theory can apply only when the patentee deliberately excludes uh, certain subject matter or certain embodiment from the scope of the claim during the prosecution. Did the patentee in this case deliberately exclude the three nozzle embodiment from the scope of the claim? No, it did not. It is true that patentee highlighted the importance and the quality of the three nozzle embodiment as preferred embodiment during the prosecution. But at the end of the day, the patentee amended the claim only from a nozzle unit to a circular nozzle unit by limiting only the shape of the nozzle but not the number of the nozzle. So what, as taught by prosecution in this case, is the shape only but not the number of nozzle. So um, the defendant, the, the patentee did not uh, deliberately exclude one nozzle embodiment from the scope of the claim. In fact, by keeping the article A here, A, a circular nozzle, patentee deliberately includes, not excluded, one nozzle embodiment uh, in the scope of the claim. On balance, therefore, one nozzle embodiment was not disclaimed through the prosecution and should be covered and read on in the claim language at issue here. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Annie. Uh, next, we'll go over whether a means plus function claim should be narrowly construed in this case. The defendants argue that, in this case, the means for controlling the amount of multivariate in the service pattern should be narrowly construed as the embodiment disclosed in the specification. Or the means for controlling the amount of the amount of air delivered to nozzles by regulating how much open the tubular portion is by rotating the handle of the controller attached to one side of the tubular portion. With this interpretation, 
the defendant contests that the the means plus uh, means for controlling demand uh, of the, the control demand of air flowing in this uh, the in, in the uh, dependent product does not fall within the scope of narrowly construed means for controlling air flow of the subject cap. However, the air flowing means in the subject character should not be limited to just one environment. These are principles plant construction established by Supreme Court in Korea. The scope of protection sought in the technical invention is determined by the plants. If a claim includes statements specified the invention by its function or effect, it should be interpreted as incorporating all inventions having such function or effect in principle. The patent code also clarifies these principles, saying that means plus function claim should not be construed as being limited to the environment shown in the specification or drawing, but rather be construed based on the broad concept that includes all of the technical environments that are understood from the technical idea review through the consideration of the specification. So, this is very important to note that such a legal framework in construing means plus function claim on the Korean law is different from that of the U.S. as stated by the Defendant's Council. So, uh, the air controlling means of the source pattern should not be limited only, only to one environment. Uh, in the specification, uh, the specification of the source pattern makes clear that the, these, these features, these features are uh, the, the means for controlling uh, the, the amount of the air flowing by regulating how much open the tubular portion is by rotating the handle of the controller attached to one side of the tubular portion. It's just one embodiment. And the specification does not exclude the, stack, the resistance of other embodiments. Therefore, uh, means, for, means for controlling the amount of amount of air flowing from a base member to a nodule unit in the sub pattern should be interpreted as incorporating all inventions having air flow controlling function or effect. So the control unit of the dependent product controls the amount of, amount of air flow by setting the motor speed. So the control, unit, control switch or dependent product falls within the scope of the air flow control needs of the subject pattern. And to conclude, the dependent product constitutes a literal infringement of the subject. All the contentions raised by the defendant are against the established rules of claim construction under the queer pattern laws, which governs this case. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you do you want to report? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Your Honor, we, we ask you to look beyond uh, these words and letters to see, to really see what's represented, what invention, what technical idea is represented by the claim and type of the claim language. Uh, we saw that this, uh, this patent invention has been described in a very specific way and characterized in a very specific way during the prosecution history as well as in the specification. And plaintiff argues that uh, a fan with only one nozzle has not been deliberately dis uh, disclaimed uh, from the patent claim in the specification or during the prosecution history. But what's been disclaimed is this idea, this uh, invention with a single nozzle and having disclaimed, having distinguished this technical idea is being different from patent claim. Uh, the penalty should not be allowed to overreach and uh, try to cover the same technical idea that's represented by the penalty. So I have something to that, at least um, first. The circular nozzle unit 
that's when used a circular housing unit, not a circular housing. And the meaning of the circular housing unit is not this price specification, which means that it should be construed. And in construing a claim term, the Supreme Court teaches that we have to consider the specification and also the technical idea of the invention. And if you do so, this claim should be limited to this. Well, clearly, all the nozzles is included in the nozzle unit. That's one thing. And the other one is that the plaintiff argued that the applicant did not disclaim certain indictment during the prosecution. But assuming that, if the applicant did not argue about the advantageous effect obtained by using a plenary of nozzles during the prosecution, then the examiner will be, would have been rejected the application because only changing the shape of the nozzle would make any difference. So the reason that the patent is granted is that the applicant argued about the advantageous effect of using a plenary of nozzles. So in view of the prosecution history, the claim term should be limited. About the means for controlling health law, the Supreme Court ruled that in construing the claim language, we should be very objective and reasonable. And in saying so, the Supreme Court means that the technical idea and environment of this product specification should be considered because, yeah, I will go to the first page. This is the Supreme Court ruling. The technical meaning of the patent claim can be exactly determined only by taking into account the detail description of figures. I have to, I want to invite your attention, attention to this term, only by. The Supreme Court views that the claim is not a random language. It is the definition of an invention, the definition of a certain technical idea. So it should be construed only by taking into consideration the real meaning, real intent of the patent. If you do so, this technical idea of patent invention is about changing the amount of air delivered to the user by closing or opening the area of the outflow. And that's the structure of the specification. Regarding this issue, the plaintiff argues that there may be another environment, there may be another way of controlling the amount of air. I agree with that. But another environment should not be changing the speed of the motor because there will be another environment about changing the area of the airflow. For example, there may be some automatic means to change the area of the airflow without using handle. So they can be changed handle with something. But changing the speed of the motor is not the invention that the patent invented from the first place. So the patent is attempt to enlarge the scope of the claim should be dismissed. Thank you. All right. Thank you. How many jurors are you following us? Some people following us. Our bench panel has proposed some questions. It's a very interesting question. So the issue is two. One is the number of motions. About that topic, Judge James Beal asked some questions to both sides. The second issue is for controlling the amount of air. The second issue is Judge Leonard Stark asked both sides some questions. And the first, Judge James Beal. Thank you, Judge Leonard. I have first of all a question for the claimants, for the plaintiff's counsel, about the meaning of nozzle unit in the claim. 
the term nozzle unit is used in the claim but not in the specification and you drew attention to the Supreme Court's case of the 11th of July 2003 uh, which uh, explains that uh, the reference uh, may not be required to other descriptions in the specification to limit the claim as long as the technical scope is clear from the claims. Now, given that there is nothing to explain what a nozzle unit is, why shouldn't we take the description as indicating what a nozzle unit would be understood to be meant by a skilled person? Because the patent then goes on to say nozzles 13 to 15 are concentrically placed in the plurality, and that the plural number of concentrically placed nozzles enables discharge of the wind from the fan in constant pressure throughout the area. So surely that's indicated that a nozzle unit has to have a plurality of nozzles. So if you may, you can try to um, answer the question on the plaintiff side. Um, by using unit, um, I think uh, the patentee was trying to uh, broaden the scope of the claim, and the unit might be comp uh, comprised of just one nozzle or maybe more. Uh, the issue here, I think, is whether there can be only one nozzle unit or more. By using the simple article A in front of circular nozzle unit, um, whether the unit um, means only just one nozzle or more doesn't really matter because in either case, just one nozzle uh, product, as in fan B of accused um, um, defendant's product, is covered by the claim language. But that doesn't really explain how a a technical person reading this pattern would un understand the term nozzle unit because if you have a nozzle unit that's made up of several nozzles, it's still a nozzle unit. Yes. But if it, it, but, but doesn't everything point towards the nozzle unit in this pattern having more than one nozzle? Uh, I think I could just repeat uh, our explanation, my explanation that maybe the specification uh, in our uh, look for purpose, the specification does not clearly state whether a uh, nozzle unit is different uh, from nozzle, uh, but whether they are the same or not, still one nozzle uh, embodiment, as in defendant's product, is read on the claim language of a circular nozzle. That's that's um, our our question. And I have uh, this question for the defendant. The submission that was, the, as I understand it, you you have um, three submissions in relation to nozzle units. The first is uh, that. Uh, the term nozzle unit needs to be understood by reference to the specification and the invention that's described there. So uh, uh, multiple nozzles covering the area. The second is based on the final history. And the third is that the alleged infringement <coughs> produces a different technical effect. And, uh, and what the claimant said in response, the claim, plaintiff said in response to that, was that's outside of scope of argument today. Now, what I understand that to mean is that uh, uh, that it doesn't matter that the infringement works in a different way if it falls within the meaning of the language of the claim. What's your answer to that? So, uh, uh, I as I said, the Supreme Court, the US Supreme Court, use the term objectively in reasonable interpretation. And that means in construing the claim, the technical principle of the invention should be considered. And the advantageous effect allegedly by the applicant during the prosecution is in 
concluded that technique of principle because that you could argue that having to vary the amount of you can have some uniform distribution of the air through the entire area of the nozzle unit. Which means that if you have single nozzle, then there will be no uniform distribution of air through the entire area. It, you're saying that this Bernoulli effect we're talking about is the opposite of uniform distribution of air. Because you're accelerating the internal air faster. Yes, that's, the, that's correct. So we should not have the area of the nozzles in our fused product in that year. And, and that technical explanation you've provided in the, um, and, and the video that yeah. you provided, is today the first time that the plaintiffs saw that, or have they been given notice of that argument? I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, I explained about this technical difference before I can say that. And the plaintiff understand about the technical difference. But I'm not sure about the video itself. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, a question for the plaintiff. We're talking about the means plus function term here. I sense that this maybe turns entirely on what our interpretation is of what's been referred to as Supreme Court case number two. It was the decision of July 23rd, 2009. I first want to confirm what I think you said, which is there is only one embodiment that is expressly disclosed in the specification of your patent. Is that correct? Yes, that's and, correct. That's so, our understanding. So if uh, our interpretation of Supreme Court Decision 2 was that with the means plus function term, you're limited to only those embodiments that are expressly disclosed in the specification, you could not prevail. Is that correct? Um, Sorry, could you repeat that question again? Sorry. Certainly. If, if, and it's, it's, I, I emphasize the word if, if our interpretation of Supreme Court Decision 2 was that with the means plus function claim term, you are limited to the embodiments that are disclosed in the specification, then you cannot prevail on this infringement claim. Is that correct? Yes, I agree. Uh, and sounds like that's uh, exactly the, the law in the state. And we believe if we, this court is in the U.S., you're likely to lose. But okay. I, I appreciate you pointing that out. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that myself. But help me understand then, uh, Supreme Court decision two, is it really different than what we agree now is the law in the United States? I, I recognize there's a, a statement that seems very helpful uh, to you. Uh, all inventions having such function, effect, or properties in principle would be included. But the very next sentence says, however, accurate understanding of the technical meaning of what is stated in the claim requires reference to the detailed description of the invention or the drawings. And I think we've agreed there's only one embodiment disclosed in the specification. So why should we not say the reference that is required to that embodiment and to the specification comes out to the same limitation on claim scope that the US law would have? So um, our thinking is that um, the Korean law construction of means plus function is a little broader than US law. So it should not be limited only the environment disclosed in the specification, but at the same time, it may not go all the way to every uh, possible uh, invention that may be applicable uh, that falls in the means plus function scope. So there might be some, uh, the scope, the scope might fall somewhere between. Uh, our thinking is that that point is the, the means plus function uh, claim covers not just embodiment disclosed in the specification, but also technology uh, that was commonly used or well known at the time of filing the application for the patent. And the control switch as used in the defendant's accused product that was very well known as of 2000 when this patent was filed. So uh, that's our understanding. This means plus function can go that far to cover those well known commonly used technologies such as common uh, control and switch. Thank you. And my question is for defendant. 
are also about Supreme Court decision number two. I, you referenced, I think, U.S. law in your argument, and I think it is now conceded that if we were applying U.S. law, you would win on this, uh, but we are not. Now, uh, by agreement, we are not. Uh, so help me understand how um, uh, I should not reach the conclusion, or this court should not reach the conclusion that Korean law is, in fact, fundamentally different on the scope of a means plus function limitation. The sentence uh, that I alluded to uh, before, uh, I want to read again, uh, from Supreme Court decision two says, in case the claim in a patent application includes a statement specifying the invention by e.g. its function, effect, or properties, it should be interpreted as incorporating all inventions having such function, effect, or properties in principle, and it, it seems like that's exactly what is happening here. Your invention has such function, effect, or properties uh, just as claimed. So why is that an incorrect interpretation? So I respectfully address your interpretation of this case well. And I'm happy that I think you know that there's a no fundamental difference between the Korean Supreme Court case and the US law. The fundamental laws are the same. The patent should not be granted more than what he invented. That's the bottom line. And then, let's go to the Supreme Court case. There is a specific referring, reference to the function, effect, and property. And this is a three elements of invention, function, effect, and property. And what we argue here is that the accused product is totally different from the invent patent invention in terms of this function, effect, and property. Because this patent invention uses a different technical principle. And the effect is that by using plurality or nozzles, they make some uniform distribution for air. But in the accused product, we don't use, we should not use the plurality of nozzles because we depend rely on totally different technical principle. So that makes the non-infringement all even based on this Supreme Court case in Korea. How about on the control unit switch uh, specifically? Can you make the same argument that you have a different function effect or property if we just look at the control unit? Yes. So let's see the clear language. So the claim language about this controlling the amount of air flowing from cell base member to cell nozzle unit. And this is the amount of air flowing from the base and to the nozzle unit. And effectively, the pattern is closing or opening the area to the, yes, yes, in the way from the base member to the nozzle unit. But in this accused product, the control is made while generating the air itself. It is not the control via the road to the northern unit. So we said that this language does not capture that kind of change of generation of the air. It is controlling the air through the, yeah, the road, yeah, on the road. Yeah. So that's this our argument. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm worried about I've been hearing the whole argument, I'm not decided <laughs> what to do right. So I just put some cases very short for my prepared talk. Two is a slide, and one is Claim A, the means for controlling the amount of air flowing from cell base member to cell nozzle unit. If you change the, the amount of the amount mean, the, the amount only. Second, the velocity only, the amount and the velocity only. Three time is three time liters. It is the same difference to me. I think, in my opinion, the controlling the amount of air, controlling the velocity of air, controlling the amount and the velocity of air. In three time, third time is, in third time is, you written the head of the claim in the third time. Imprisonment is okay, but 
the amount means the three types is different. I think it's different. What about what do you think about the three type uh, type claims uh, to have the same technical meaning? Uh, <coughs> our view is the uh, the three different phrases are likely to have three different meaning because they're different wording uh, and thus I think the amount and velocity is uh, separate, two separate things that can be independently controlled. So as long as, for example, you can control the amount, whether uh, amount of the air, whether you control the amount of air by change of speed of air or density of air, it doesn't really matter because in our claim, uh, it's not specified in the claim. Um, usually, we understand there's more element uh, the scope of the claim gets narrower. So the third one, the amount and velocity, having both um, parameters, will um, narrow the scope of the claim. So from, from our point of view, um, the first one, like the current language in the claim, has the broadest uh, scope of the claim covering uh, defendant's product. Yes. What about the yeah, how we see those three terms are all different. And the math thing is about the, yes, actually, your question highlights that this term should be interpreted because true in the middle specification. Because the amount itself is not clear. But in terms of this patent, amount should mean the amount of air delivered to the user. And it is not about velocity, it is not about the pressure. Because the technical technology is very simple here. You deliver air and you control the amount of air to the user. So all three words are different have different meaning and the amount should be consumed in the specification and that it is limited to the specific technical concept described in the specification. And I want to highlight that the inventor did not anticipate this accused product. So in reverse doctrinal equivalence, it is uncredited, so it should be excluded from the start of the I hesitate to hear this because this point arises from what you just said. If you look at the long paragraph of the specification of the patent, you look at the first sentence, I'm not sure it is clear that the patentee didn't anticipate this because it says, in the subject invention, the speed of the motor is always the same in one embodiment. Does that not suggest that in other embodiments the speed of the motor could vary, which is exactly what we're doing? Yeah, I think that is speculation. So the specification does not describe about the change of the velocity and the simply speaking about the constant velocity. So you do not say that the inventor predicted the variable speed. Yes. Spe is speculation fair? Is it not what any engineer looking at that would immediately think? Oh, so I can vary it. Your Honor, I don't, I don't think the inventor necessarily envisioned different various embodiments with the different <coughs> more speeds, but it is, you know, it's uh, uh, the practice of claim and specification. The patent drafting, uh, you know, we generally draft patent specification and characterize uh, in one environment, you know, in another environment, such that uh, such that the you know specification can be as broad as possible. Uh, but the thing is that in this specification, although it is described as one environment, there are no other environments. And also if the present key for a better term for this technology, he should have been used that term may or can, but he used the term please. So, I don't think that is correct. <coughs> now, I ask the first time. The first time, all in this case, there are very many jurors, I think, the first time. <laughs> so, jurors, I ask you, the three type phrase has the same technical meaning, in your opinion, or not? If you think the same, raise your hand. <laughs> no? It's different. Raise your hand. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>
have to be. And the second slide is, uh, I think, skip uh, Second slide, mm, okay, I got a task for you. She's Korean, sorry. <laughs> My mother is a Korean, so. <laughs> to speak Korean. <laughs> in this pattern, uh, there's only one embodiment, the left side. It includes, it means, if, if they lose another embodiment, the right side, and it means and the handle also exists, and the bird um, controls the speed, air speed. It's a very long art. So if pattern shows another embodiment, what do you conclude about this case? As plaintiff, we are more than happy to answer this question because <laughs> this very uh, profession will even uh, make our infringement uh, case stronger. And I think under this uh, change, I think we will prevail even under U.S. law because we have now two embodiments, and the means plus function should cover both embodiments. Page covers um, dependent products. So in this case, our, play, uh, our infringement contention will be even stronger. What about dependent products? We respect actually each other. <laughs> First of all, if there is a two type of control in the specification, and the claim only recite uh, what type of control, then the other type of control was excluded from the claim principle. That is the case. There's a two type of control in the upper portion and the bottom portion. And the claim did not recite the bottom portion of control. And then the bottom portion of control is excluded from the principle. So there will be no infringement. Thank you. So, I'm 
그래서 어, 이 고추 아드립을 넣으면 되는데 피틀 미니스, 그바우탄 피틀 미니스 아드립을 고배 디켈레브 마이 파이널 디시즌 I'm not sure It takes one hour or two hours Nobody knows Please be patient and wait here 
of the configuration with multiple modules. Therefore, due to the progress of this application, the claims are li limited to configura configurations with multiple modules. Uh, and uh, regarding the airflow control method, the claim is not considered to be a means plus function claim. And the claim is considered to include means that can usually be assumed based on common te general technical knowledge. And adjusting the speed of the engine is included in the claims because it can be considered to be one of the possible means. Uh, last of all, opinion is my uh, personal opinion. Thank you very much. I use my translation. <laughs>这个全力要求为依据的那么在原告的全力要求限定的是一个环形判决单元这个环形判决单元与判决是不同的部件虽然在说明书中对于实施力中有建议有三个判决但是该实施力对于全力要求并没有限定的作用原告对于权利要求的修改也仅仅是对于判决单元的形状不涉及数量所以我个人认为这个原告的意见是有一定道理的这个权利要求的修改也仅仅是对于判决单元的形状不涉及数量所以我个人认为这个原告的意见是有一
uh, issue. I was also with the plaintiff. I would not be if I were applying U.S. law. I think we all agreed on that. Uh, but it did seem to me that the statement in the Supreme Court decision number two in Korea uh, essentially is that you do get to claim uh, all means that have the function uh, that are the same as what you have claimed. Um, my sense from our deliberations and even from some of the comments I've heard is that uh, we may not be as divided as it appears. I think if we had a little more time, uh, at least on the first issue, I think perhaps we might be in the majority. Uh, and uh, with a little more focus on Korean law, perhaps we might have been in the majority on the second as well. And my final comment would be besides how much I've enjoyed this and really found the arguments very interesting and helpful is I thought it was uh, kind of nice that uh, the chief judge in desperation uh, reached out to the collective, to the jury, for input. And I think that says just a little bit about his confidence in juries to decide these cases. So I'll just put that plug in for the US system. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You are very famous and excellent barista. Can you have some comments of both councils? <laughs> I, I, I was very impressed by the way that you um, uh, presented your arguments um, in a second language. Uh, that's always a very impressive thing to do. Um, I, I was also really quite attracted by the confidence of the claimants, the plaintiffs, to say, really absolutely nothing about what their case was in opening so that, that, that they were going to present their real arguments um, in rebuttal and um, that, that's a very confident um, uh, way of doing it. I, I, I wonder whether actually that lost, left me behind a little because I thought I could see that that, that was what was happening. And I, I also thought it was um, very impressive for the defendants to um, uh, share the, the advocacy in the way that you did according to your strengths on the issues. So I can really congratulate you. Thank you. Now the court close. Thank you very much for your